friends, and welcome back to my crafty space. In today's video, I am going to be working on my first project for Story Kit Crush using the Glow Story Kit. So this kit, as you may have noticed in my planning video, I have chosen to primarily use in an album I'm creating about my sister's wedding. So this one here, and, and I should also mention that that album is sized at 10 by 8. So it's a 10 by 8 gray linen album. So for the story today, I was primarily inspired by the negative pieces of the chipboard. I love when the chipboard comes in this particular die because I love using the negative space to add photos behind and make this kind of a framing element for my photos. I think that it looks so good. So what I'm planning to do is to tell the story about my sister's rehearsal dinner or the day before her actual wedding day. I'm going to be using two sections of the Ah oh Yeah title from a four by six journaling card that I just cut in half. And then I've also pre-typed out my journaling onto vellum, which is going to go underneath the photos. Now I may look through some of my pattern paper to see if I would rather use a pattern paper instead of white, but uh, that's a bridge that I'll cross here in just a minute. And then in addition to this, the supplies up here and some tiny phrases and stuff like that, I've also got six, no not six, I've got eight photos that are sized at, I believe an inch, 1.75, they're close to two inches, so almost a two inch circle. And that is what's going to go behind the negative pieces there on my layout. So I'm gonna go ahead and get you on fast forward while I put this layout together. And then once I've got everything done, we'll slow back down, I'll read the journaling, and then we'll call it a day. So let's jump into the process. When starting to work on this layout, one of the first decisions I, I decided to make was to actually not put the spread on top of white paper, but instead to pick out a color or a pattern that I could add all of the elements on top of. I felt like the white with the white negative pieces of chipboard was just going to be too much. It was going to not be vibrant enough for the event that this was. So ultimately what I'm going to choose is this yellow pattern. It's yellow with white hearts on top that came from the Ali Edwards Hearts Quarterly Scrapbook Collection. And when I go to cut it down, I accidentally cut it too short. So it should have been eight and a quarter tall by 10.7 or 10.875 wide, but I actually cut it down to eight inches tall, of course. So then I had to figure out something I could do to fix that because that was going to bother me. So I took out this really old piece of um, pattern paper from Paige Evans. It's actually from the Horizon collection and it's an ombre painted pinks. And I thought that that would look really pretty behind the yellow. So I'm actually going to trim an extra bit off of the yellow so I get a decent amount of pink at the top and the bottom. And then eventually I will adhere that together and let that be the background piece. I really like how this turns out because it's going to play off of the pinks in the title and make everything, you know, make a lot more sense, I suppose. So next, I went to go ahead and punch out my photos, but for whatever reason, my, my two inch circle punch is just kind of crappy and it doesn't punch very well. So instead, I'm going to roughly cut the circles out here with my scissors because I don't need the edges to be perfect. I just need them to be close enough that I can add them onto the back of the, of the chipboard piece um, without having them poke out of the sides. So this worked out a lot better. When I was choosing photos for this layout, I tried to choose a variety where some of them are closer ups of our faces, some of them have more of our bodies in it, some of them have two people, some of them have three people or four people, and just kept it as varied as possible. And then when I was putting them on the layout here, I did the same thing, trying to keep the ones where it's a closer up of our faces apart and ones where there were more than one person in the photo have those be on opposite sides of the spread just to make this feel a little bit more balanced. 
One of the best things about using the chipboard like this as a frame for my photos is that I actually don't have to add any adhesive to get them on there. I just peel off the backing and then set down the piece on top of the photo, just trying to make sure the photo is as centered in that circle as possible. So you'll see how I do that right here. So I just get it into position and then press it down and it picks the photo up. Some of them end up going a little bit past the edge, so I'll just grab my scissors and trim that off, no big deal. And then this is going to be the photo portion. For now, I'm going to set it aside upside down so I don't accidentally stick it to anything that it shouldn't stick to. Next, we're going to move back over to the background paper. I'm just making sure it looks exactly how I want it to look before adding my adhesive and sticking it permanently down. For this, I'm going to use my double-sided score tape here just for an extra strong hold, and I'll, I'll actually end up using that on the chipboard as well because now that the photos are on the back side of the chipboard, most of the sticky adhesive is taken up. So I do need to add a little bit more adhesive to the back of those in order to get them stuck permanently down. So now we are about to get this ready to go. I did take off one side first, so one of the sides and the top. I stuck that down and then peeled off the rest of the backing tape. That way I could just make sure that everything was positioned in the middle where I thought it would look best. Before adding any of my photos or embellishments onto the page, I also want to make sure to hole punch my background paper because I don't want to accidentally add something where the holes are going to be and then end up punching it later. Now that I've got that done, we're going to bring over all of the different elements and set them on here just to get an idea of where everything is going to go. And then I will start to actually adhere some stuff down and I will also take care of my title. So the title card there you said you saw said ah yeah and then yeah ah. So I took that to my couch, watched a television show, and cut out all of the letters as individual letters. The reason I wanted them to be individual is so that I could layer them on top of each other. So I could get one ah yeah title per chipboard square. So I do have to smoosh them together a bit in order to fit it all on there, but you can still read the word and it looks really awesome once it's all in place. So there's how you can see how this is going to turn out. And also because the card had it ah uh, yeah and then yeah ah, uh, by cutting out the letters I was able to make the the title say ah uh, yeah ah uh, yeah twice. I don't know if that makes any sense but I like the flow of that better. So here I am making sure that the chipboard is as centered as possible. I am sticking the left side down temporarily while I add stronger tape to the right side of this. And then I will release or take off the release paper and stick it down next to the one that is on the page. And then I will lightly pull up the left portion and do the exact same thing, add some of the stronger tape to the back, line it up with the right hand side, which will now be permanently adhered down and use that as a template for knowing exactly where to place my pieces. So there I'll take it up and then here we're going to stick it right back down. With these chipboard pieces, they are um, packaging. And because of that, there are two little numbers that you can barely see in the corners touching each other in the bottom. For that, I actually pulled out a tiny phrase. Uh, it's not a sticker, it's one of the like rip apart tiny phrase strips. And I'm going to use that over top of those numbers to cover them up so you actually don't see any indication that that was packaging beforehand. For my journaling, I printed that on top of vellum, knowing that I would probably use some kind of pattern paper and the vellum would help cut down the busyness between the words and the background paper, letting the words stand out a bit more and making them easier to read. To adhere the vellum on top of the page, I used my Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher and stapled both of the sides. Um, letting the rest of it be kind of unattached, but the staples hold it on there. For my title itself, I'm using some roller adhesive and I'm starting from the left-hand side. So I basically built in the yeah, and then built in the ah on the other side so that I could keep everything exactly centered. 
And then I'm going to stitch around the entire perimeter of this layout to help everything stay down and to also give it a little bit more texture on the page. So I'll put away the sewing machine and then you can see a little bit better how that turns out. All right, friends, that completes my layout for today. So this one came together really, really nicely. I love the way that fussy cut titles look when you layer the letters on top of each other like that. I think it gives it such a cool texture. And the decision to uh, stitch around the perimeter of this page was just to again, add a little bit more texture and make this feel more framed. And I think that, I think that it does just that. So my journaling for this one, um, I wrote down here on the vellum. Here's what I had to say. After flying home to Mexico, no, sorry. <laughs> After flying to Mexico and spending four full days enjoying the pools, weather, food, and more, your rehearsal day was finally here. This was the moment where everything got real. You were dressed in a Mexican style dress and looked beautiful. Your coordinator, Angel, took us through the itinerary for the following day, helping us figure out the arrangement for walking down the aisle, explaining the ceremony, and showing us where the reception would take place, weather permitting. The day was filled with joy and excitement. Axel's family arrived, and it was so nice to see them all again and to meet his brother for the very first time. We had all been looking forward to this day for so long and just felt so much gratitude that it was here. In the next 24 hours, you and Axel would seal the deal, merging our families and hearts. Ah, yeah, bring on the big day. And that, my friends, is this layout. So this is going to go inside of the 10 by 8 album that I'm creating all about this wedding. I am considering giving that album to my sister. Um or if I, you know, considering whether I want to keep it for myself, but I'm really leaning towards giving it to her at this point. All right, so I am going to be back again later this week with another layout using the Glow Story Kit. So be sure to keep your eye out for that one. And then I'm also working on the other stories that I had planned using this kit over on YouTube. So the content that you are seeing here will be exclusive to Patreon and uh, the process videos will only be available here. And then the other videos that you'll see on YouTube are just in addition to what we're creating here. So hopefully you enjoy seeing all of the layouts come together this week slash this month. All right, friends. Well, until next time, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye, friends.